I wanted to make an announcement that tomorrow I will be having a live solve of the 2022, the 2021 to 2022 AMC 8 starting at 3 p.m. Pacific time. Um, I'm still getting the equipment set up for that and arranging how it will look. I think the lighting will be better than the last time I did a live solve and hopefully it will go okay. I will see you tomorrow for that if you plan to attend. For now, I wanted to get into another example of building mathematical intuition and different sources that you can get it from uh, and then how you can apply it. So this book right here is the one that I've advocated. It's on my website. It's from uh, Jurgensen, Brown and Jurgensen. Um, came out way long time ago. Uh, I think it's one of the better geometry books I've ever seen. There might be a better one out there, but not many. Um, and so this is from page 432 of it. And I wanted to demonstrate kind of something you can do as a problem. And then as you're doing it, perhaps you perceive uh, ways that you could apply it. And then you could add those ways that you could apply it to maybe your small notebook, like observations that you make. So I wanna go through this problem number 31 here. Um, also, this is kind of how my classes work, just no camera. So if you're interested in classes and stuff, shoot me an email as well. Uh, you can also check it out on my website. So uh, it says, find the area, problem 31. Find the area of the right triangle in terms of A and B. So you have this right triangle here, right? Clearly the right angle is at the top, and so A and B are its legs. And you could say it's half A times B. Okay. Now, find the area part B in terms of C and H. Well, that's also going to be half base times height, which in this case the base will be C and the height will be H. Okay, then it has you do something that many modern textbooks wouldn't even have you do, and that is to explore. Solve for H in terms of other variables. And so if we set these two equal, they don't tell you how, but it's kind of clear. These both represent the area. Does the area of a triangle change depending on how you calculate it? No. So then these must be equal. So I can in fact set them equal, one half CH, and I'm gonna erase the bottom one. And immediately you should say, okay, well I can multiply by two, and now I've got AB equals CH. And now it wants us to solve for H, meaning make it say H equals. So we divide by C and divide by C. Okay, but you get that it's the product of the legs over the hypotenuse. So for a right triangle, the altitude to the hypotenuse, which will always be the shortest altitude, why? Why is that? Think about it. If the product, here's the thing that I use a lot. Okay, this is what I wanted to get to. It's right here, this part where we wrote AB equals CH. Think about the implications of that. You're basically saying that any base of a triangle times its associated height must equal any other base times its height. And you might think, well, duh. Okay, let's see if maybe this might pay a dividend in certain problems. We'll get to that in a moment. But for now, uh, you could also memorize it like this. Don't just memorize it as letters. Don't look at this and go, oh, it's A, B over C. Sure, problem done, did it. Again, that is not building intuition. That is not learning how and asking questions like, oh, this could be useful or what kind of problems might I be able to use this in? Okay, so you cannot just focus on getting the work done. The problem is just the start of the work. The work is happening up here as you think and analyze about what these things mean. And don't just look at it as AB equals CH. Turn it into the ideas that it represents. It represents the product of the base and the height. And for a triangle, since its area doesn't change, the product of the base and height will never change for any base choice with its associated height. Okay, so now we've got that down. Let's go look at a way we might be able to apply it. I'm gonna switch over to the 2002 AMC 10A. Yeah, I know it's a little bit older of a test, but it doesn't mean that you can't take mechanics from this and see how you can utilize them. I'm gonna scroll up a minute so you don't cheat and look ahead at what we're looking at here. Um, okay, so anyhow, so what I wanted to get to then again is that the base of, any, of a triangle times its associated height can be used to find the area, but then any other base times its height must be equal. 
Okay, so now let's see what that looks like in action once you've mastered the understanding of the technique. Where do I write that? I wrote it in here. Any base times any height equals any other base times any other height. Say that tons of times. Eventually, when you get to this kind of a problem, you act instantly. Let's see what it looks like. So looking at problem 13, given a triangle with side lengths 15, 20, and 25, I know it's easier in the older era. That's fine. Find the triangle's smallest altitude. Note what they don't say. They don't say the altitude to the hypotenuse, right? Because that would be more obvious. They say smallest altitude, which is why they want you to think and put it together. Which one is it? Okay. Now, the reason why it is is because the hypotenuse is the longest side. So since the product of the height and the base is always equal, what do we call that? It's uh, inverse variation, right? Y equals K over X. If you multiply by x, you get that the constant is the product of those two. So same thing here. If the value of the base goes up, the value of the height must go down. So then, of course, it's the smallest altitude to the hypotenuse. Okay, so then look at this. How do I know it's a right triangle? They don't mention that. Obviously, it's 3, 4, 5 for you experienced students. If you're not as experienced, you should know 3, 4, 5 when you see it. So all that it looks like is this. This is how fast it goes. If I was not explaining to you, this is what I would do when I saw this problem. I would go... Done. 12. That's it. It's the product of the legs over the hypotenuse. Or if I didn't think about that right away to put it that clean together, because to be honest, I don't always think that cleanly. Maybe I just do 15 times 20 equals 25 times H. Okay. Also, you'll notice when I divided by 25, I might do 25 on this side, but I don't do 25 on this side. I do make this choice. I can see in my mind immediately that what I really want is two fives because the two fives gives cancellation power much easier than 15 into 25 than what it leaves. And then back here, I think it's just faster if I write it as two fives as I'm going. Okay, so there's a demonstration of that. But in this same test, there's another piece of intuition that you can gain for future tests. In addition, another application of this. Let's see what that looks like. We'll scroll to the end. Number 25, I actually have in my small notebook the following statement. Well, I wouldn't even want to tell you. I don't want to spoil it. Let's get this problem here. So in trapezoid ABCD with bases AB and CD, okay, AB is 52, BC is 12, CD 39, blah, blah, blah. Okay, the area of ABCD, the trapezoid is, the area of a trapezoid is the average of the bases times the height. Okay, so you've got 52 plus 39 over 2 times the height. How are we going to get that height? Now you have to understand the diagram's not to scale. Okay, so that might play a role. 52 plus 39 is going to be 91. So you've got 91 over 2 times the height. Okay, um, notice I didn't use the more popular uh, half B or B1 plus B2 over 2 times H. Stop thinking in pure symbols. Memor memorize concepts. Concepts is a much more powerful memory that you can work through quicker because your brain learned words before it learned symbols, okay? So you're going to speak before you learn to read what the symbols meant, okay? Then, uh, memorize it in this way. So now, we have to take this point, at this point in the problem, look for observations, right? A lot of times you're like, well, what do I do? How do I get the idea of what to do on a problem? Well, is there anything that we can observe about 39 and 52? I mean, 5 and 12, they're kind of interesting, aren't they? I mean, there's something quite familiar about 5 and 12. And if it's not familiar, that is the problem. Again, you need to know your Pythagorean triples. 5, 12, 13 is a Pythagorean triple. So if you see the 5 and 12 and you go, yeah, but they're not connected. Okay, but, that, but man, the 13, uh, interesting. Uh. Oh, what's this? 39 and 52 are both divisible by... 13. Why? Why are they? Why? Wait a minute. 5, 12, 13 is not there, but yet these are divisible by 13? What are they doing here? That's a really well designed question, right? They have put this together like little breadcrumbs for you to follow to get to the answer. Whoever wrote this, I think this is fantastic. So it was actually from this problem that I thought the following. First off, if the 5 and 12 aren't together, maybe they could be. 
Maybe they could be. This is the insight that I gained and added to the small notebook as well. And that is, if you have a trapezoid, the dominant approach is to drop altitudes. So we drop altitude here and here, 90 degrees. Okay, great. But in this problem, you could do it that way. It's just not fun. It's not a fun experience. And it doesn't take advantage of the 5, 12, 13 possibilities or why those are divisible by 13 or anything. It's just kind of a standard, you would put like X here and this would be 13 minus X and you'd find the height and it's not pretty or anything like that. And then you would do two systems of equations with H and you'd, you know, Pythagorean theorem, A squared plus B squared equals C squared, all that noise. But we don't want to do that here, right? We don't want to do that. Um, if you do, you can get the answer that way, but... If the five and 12 aren't together, fix it. It's not drawn to scale, just kind of move this over there. Let's see what it would look like. Undo that, undo that, draw the five here. Okay, if I draw the five there, what am I doing? How do I know this is five? Well, I'm making it parallel to DA. This is one of the tricks in trapezoids. Sometimes, not always, sometimes consider making it into a parallelogram and a triangle. Now let's see what happens if I do that. If this is five and this is 12, we know that parallelograms have opposite sides congruent. If we don't know that, small notebook, uh, put the 39 over here. How much is left on the bottom base? 52 minus 39 is 13. Now what? Now we're off to the races because we're looking for the height and it's the height to the hypotenuse. It's simply five times 12 over 13. Why is that cool? Because 13 goes into 91 seven times, two goes into 12 six times, 30 times seven, 210. Okay, so it's earlier observations that any base times any height equals any other base times any other height. Now, how often do you get to use those kind of things? I call those mechanics. They're a mechanic, it's a little technique or something. It's not gonna solve the entire problem for you. But if you know it, you've greased the skids. You're gonna go a little bit faster through that problem than somebody who has to think about those kinds of things. You need to train yourself to see these kinds of concepts. That's why I advocate making something like this, a small notebook that you review periodically. Usually the week of the test every day, at least once. And then other days, maybe the other weeks of the year, one time a week, go through every concept and remind yourself of what you've learned. Okay, because that way, when it's at the tip of your recent memories, you're more likely to put it into action under time pressure, which is what this is all about. So I hope this helps you guys again with your development of, tu of intuition. And I will see you tomorrow for the live solve of the AMC8. You guys have a good one.